This video shows the hidden dangers present when a ship overtakes another vessel in a narrow channel without understanding the hydrodynamic forces acting around both ships. Let's call the overtaking vessel Ship A and the vessel being overtaken Ship B. In the beginning, it may look like Ship A will pass clear of Ship B. But as soon as her stern approaches the midship section of the vessel being overtaken, Ship B's bow suddenly reacts and swings to the starboard side, thereby smashing through the port quarter of Ship A. So what happened? Let's dissect the invisible forces acting on these vessels and how to manage them for safe overtaking. Whenever a ship moves through the water, it creates forces around it, a positive force on the forward part, a negative or suction force from the midships to the quarter sides, and another positive force on the stern part. The positive force is created when the ship moves headway as it pushes the water. This is called the bow pressure or bow cushion effect, and we can see it clearly on the ship's bow as it breaks through the water. The stern also creates a positive or high pressure force by expelling water from the propeller's thrust. As water speeds up past the middle section, pressure drops, creating suction on the quarter part of the ship, the area from the midship to the side of the stern. Situations like this are more intense in narrow waters such as canals or channels, as what we can see here. With all these forces present, we also have to consider the ship's pivot point, which is located one-third of the bow when the ship moves forward. The ship's pivot point, also known as the turning point or pivot axis, refers to the theoretical point around which a vessel rotates when making turns. The pivot point is dynamic and moves depending on the ship's speed and direction. When stationary, the turning axis is at the midship of the vessel. When moving astern, it is at the after part of the vessel. Going back to the scenario, the stern of ship B gets pushed a little by the bow of ship A as the overtaking starts. Ship A is faster than ship B. Hence, its greater positive force is able to repel the suction force of ship B's stern. As soon as ship A's port quarter gets in range with ship B's starboard quarter, it reacts by slightly getting attracted to ship A. Though we learn that both of their quarter sections have suction forces present, and with both of their bows pushing one another, this wasn't enough to create contact between them because of another force present called bank cushion effect. The bank cushion effect is a hydrodynamic force that describes the tendency of the ship's bow to be pushed away from the bank as it gets closer due to the high pressure buildup between the bank and the ship's bow. As ship B's bow gets pushed away, her stern is stopped from getting totally sucked in with ship A's port quarter. From that point on, it seemed the overtaking process looked like a success without any accident. But remember that these forces are still acting below the ship's hull, and without proper rudder adjustments to counteract them, an accident is bound to happen. As ship A is poised to pass a passing distance, ship B's bow suddenly turns to starboard and gets attracted to the overtaking vessel's port quarter until they kiss. With ship A's speed, her negative suction force greatly influences ship B's bow pressure, making her swing to starboard. As her bow gets closer, her stern starts to veer to the opposite side, the port side where the bank suction force is present, aggravating the collision. Bank suction is the tendency of the stern of a ship to swing toward the near bank when operating in a river or constricted waterway. Basically, it is the opposite of the bank cushion effect. That's why we can see that it happens so quickly since all the forces present are in harmony for a collision to occur. We can't also ignore the fact that Ship B is using her rudder throughout the situation. However, her speed is too slow for the rudder to be effective. To prevent this from happening, Ship B, the vessel being overtaken, should have kept her speed at a maneuvering level. As soon as Ship A's midship is at her bow, she should have applied counter rudder, in this case rudder to port, to prevent the collision. Watching how the situation unfolds and anticipating the hydrodynamic forces acting on their hulls can help them take appropriate actions and prevent such incidents. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing so I can make more educational content.